Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to look at the law of attraction and what it is. And we're going to look at if Christians should be applying the law of attraction in their lives. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on it. I'm going to give you guys my recent encounter regarding the law of attraction. And I'm going to, we're going to be looking at it and looking at the origin of the law of attraction and should Christians be using the law of attraction and what the Bible says to be using instead of the law of attraction okay so let's go so it was last week or the week before um, there was a post on a Facebook networking group for girls or ladies in business so being a businesswoman myself I am joined or I follow a lot of business related posts on especially on Facebook and on Instagram so in this post I just want to go to it on my phone quickly just give me one second so this person put in this post saying I've manifested my dream home my soulmate husband and amazing clients she's obviously an entrepreneur I have a group where I share law of attraction tips so you can do the same who wants in and I kid you not many 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 women just replied yes me love it um, me please all in I'm in you know to that effect that they are willing to take part of the law of attraction they are willing to learn how to manifest things into existence Remember, I always say in my videos that this world that we're living in is spiritual first and natural second. There is a spiritual world that controls this natural realm. Okay, so from this post, I read the post and immediately alarm bells went off because I, having been a Christian all these years and knowing how the new age the antichrist, the satanic occultist new age is pulling people in the most attractive and most indulging way ever. Red flags went off and I knew it and I was like, okay, this is a business page. Regardless of race or religion, we're all here for the same thing. We're business women, we're networking, we're feeding ideas and you know things off of each other. There's no place for this. So anyway, on this post of this person, I went into the comment section and me being me, <laughs> the Christian that I am, that is always ready to spread the gospel, I went and I put a comment. So I'll read to you guys what my comment was. And let me read it. Ladies, a word of caution. Take it or leave it. Law, the law of attraction works and it is very powerful. However, what actually answers your requests are evil demonic entities. The more you manifest, the more they have legal right to demand from you. This is when you start seeing shadows in your house, hear voices, and start feeling presences, like, you know, feeling a presence. People will say, I was sitting in a room and I just felt a presence, like something came into the room and it was this dark presence. And my hair, you know, stood on ends or, you know, I just, something was in the room. Okay, so this is when you start seeing shadows in your house, hear voices and feel presences. Be careful and actually research things related to the astral realm before blindly going into it. Nothing is for nothing in this world. Nothing is for nothing. Especially in the spiritual. So that was my response. And I tell you, the laughing emojis I got from that response, letting the same group of women know that yes, you can attract your soulmate yes you can attract your clients yes you can attract your business yes you can the law of attraction is there it exists and it's powerful however however you need to know what is behind the law of attraction that's answering your requests you need to know what you are meditating to you need to know that the law of attraction is a big gateway into the new age 
it's a massive gateway into the new age. Should Christians be doing the law of attraction? No, we should not. We should not. The world will laugh at us and mock us and scorn us for not wanting to take part in their pagan practices. Okay? So, where does the law of attraction originate from? What is the law of attraction and where that does it originate from? So, the law of attraction is putting out into the universe and repetition, 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 saying, um, universe, I want a Porsche Cayenne. 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 I manifest a Porsche Cayenne. A Porsche Cayenne will come into my, into my life next year this time. You know, it's just through meditation and repetition and focusing your mind on that thing. It will manifest. You're pulling it closer. That's what people think. People think by saying it over and over and over again in a positive attitude, you are pulling that actual thing closer. But that's not how it works. There are two kingdoms in this world that we do not see, but that is very much at work in our daily lives. It's the kingdom of the Lord, with Jesus Christ as His Son, and the Holy Spirit as His wisdom and His knowledge, and heaven's army angels, that the Lord says, that the Lord says, we as his children, we have the authority to command the armies of angels in heaven. They are at our disposal. And they, you have that, but we're not using it. We're not using it. You know, the angels in, in the armies, imagine how many angels, how many people, if you convert it to people, are in one army in this like on earth imagine how many angels is in one army in heaven and the bible says heaven has armies of angels that are at our disposal in the word god calls himself the leader the god of angel armies not one army armies he's talking about his angels so you have that kingdom of light, of goodness, of purity, and then you have another kingdom of darkness. That kingdom also has armies. That kingdom also has angels. That kingdom also has entities that are waiting for you to call on them so they can do you a favor and in return in the spiritual where the laws have been written before the world was made you owe them a favor back so this law of attraction it doesn't call on the name of Jesus Christ it doesn't call on God the Creator it calls on the universe God the Creator of the universe you're not using him you using the universe. Back to previous videos, Satan fell onto this earth after he was kicked out of heaven. So the Bible says he is the prince of this world. He sits in the second heaven. Huh? You using him and his armies, and in turn you using them to do you favors. They are doing you these favors, and you thinking, "Oh, I'm doing this all by myself." putting it out there into the universe. The universe is nothing on its own. It's nothing on its own. It can't stand on its own. It can't just exist on its own. So you're putting these thoughts out there. You're putting this meditation out there. You're putting these prayers because prayers or prayers is communicating to a source that you cannot see with your naked eye. That's what prayers are. So you are manifesting. You are praying. Who are you praying to? Who are you praying to? There's powers, but it, are you praying to the right power, Christian? Are you praying to the are you seeking the, the Lord on your business clients? Are you seeking the Lord in your business plans? Are you seeking the Lord in your dream home? Are you seeking the Lord? the creator that made you, 
that knows the path of your life for your spouse? Or are you seeking powers from another source that comes across as blessed and good and light energy, but has a totally different intention for your life? The source, this power, this energy from the kingdom of darkness wants to come in, oppress and possess and control and bind. Okay, so that's why I said to this, the person that posted this, I said, there's nothing for nothing. There's nothing for nothing. There's light and there's darkness. This new age movement is there to look good. But the intentions behind it is from the kingdom of hell. If Satan comes and he shows you himself in his true form, nobody, nobody will voluntarily worship him. Because he hates human beings. He inherently hates human beings because we are made in the image of God and we have the grace of God and we are under grace. We have, we have capacity for God's love and God's forgiveness and God's mercy and His grace. And Satan and his demons does not have that. They are outside of God's grace. So anyway, that's why I said to this woman, you're inviting things into your house because the, the concept of a legal right or the concept of a contract or the concept of permission is very much at play with the law of attraction. Okay, so... Where does the law of attraction come from? And I also said, you need to research before blindly agreeing to something. Where does the law of attraction come from? So if I go to Google and I just put in law of attraction origin, we can all, like, we can all do that for ourselves. So it gives me this explanation. In 1877, the term law of attraction appeared in print for the first time in a book written by the Russian occultist Helena Blavatsky in a context alluding to an attractive power existing between elements of spirit. The first articulator of the law as a general principle was Prentice Malford. So this person that first brought the law of attraction in 1877 into society by writing it in her book, she was an occultist. Okay, rewind. What do occultists do? Let's ask Google. Google, what is an occultist? So Google is giving me this according to Wikipedia. So in the broader sense, the occult is a category of supernatural beliefs and practices encompassing such phenomena as those involving mysticism, spirituality, and magic in terms of any otherworldly agenda. It can also refer to other non-religious supernatural ideas like extrasensory percep perception and parapsychology. So, magic. Occultists practice magic. We now know that black magic, white magic, yellow magic, green magic, blue magic is all the same thing. It is the practice of witchcraft. It is magic. So occultists practice magic. Occultists put spells on people. Occultists, they call it the dark arts. They invoke spirits. Which spirits do they invoke? Not the spirits of, of the kingdom of light. Because what the, the kingdom of light has nothing to do with evil deeds. Nothing. 
Nothing. The Bible says you cannot walk with God and hold hands with Satan at the same time. You cannot do it. So, by doing the law of attraction, you are taking part in an occultic magic practice. Okay? Who practices occultism? It is witches and warlocks. Is witches and warlocks allowed under the under the righteousness of the Lord. They can be forgiven, they can be redeemed. But are they allowed under the righteousness as children of God? No, they are not. Before they come into the light, they need to put those things down. So we need to research. We need to do our research before we jump into these things because the new age, the new age is very, 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 the, like deceiving and very inviting and it looks innocent on the surface because we all want flourishing businesses we all want the spouse our 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 soulmate we all want that house we all want those cars we all want that 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 bank account we all want that health we all want that 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 popularity but how are you getting it how are we going about it, especially if you are a Christian? That's why Christians unintentionally, unintentionally put curses in their generations. Because the Bible says that if you bow at the altar of the Lord, He will bless your bloodline three, four generations to come. But if you bow at the altar of Satan, he will curse your bloodline three, four generations to come. He will curse it. And this law of attraction is an unintentional curse that you are putting on your bloodline. You may not suffer the consequences of that curse, but you give demonic spirits legal right to your bloodline. They will destroy your children. They will destroy your grandchildren. They will destroy your great grandchildren. That innocent baby that is coming into this world, they will destroy their lives. You are destroying it before that child is even a concept, before that child is even thought of, way before that child is even conceived. So we need to research these things. We need to have knowledge. Okay, so let's put down the law of attraction and we find an alternative, a safe alternative, a beautiful alternative, a healthy alternative, a, a blessed alternative, a, a, you know? Let's put down the law of attraction. So there's your answer. Should Christians be doing, taking part in the law? Should anyone be taking part of in the law of attraction the answer is no occultist is occultism is the origin the origin of the law of attraction occultist occultism is practiced by witchcrafts and warlocks and occults it is involved in the spiritual world of demons and evil spirits and evil entities that's the answer from google Okay, so what's the alternative? What is the, the something that's even the, the bomb diggity? Something that is a million, billion, gazillion better, times better than the law of attraction. I'll give it to you. So, in this book, if you go to First Psalms, listen to what the Lord says. Christians, non-Christians, whatever you are, listen to what the creator of the universe says is better. He says... Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. If you don't follow the advice of the wicked, your joy will be overflowing because it means that your advice, your path will be in righteousness. Okay. Or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of attraction? No. The law of the Lord. Meditating on it day and night. Not meditating in the universe of what you want to be put into your life. Calling spirits to bring. Meditating. Calling spirits to bring. Meditating on the law of the Lord. 
the creator of everything day and night there's a bird trying to get in the window where was I they are like trees planted along the river bank you stay green every season of your life you are green you are prospering you are flourishing you are you are joyful huh? if a tree is planted near the water as long as there's water there that tree will never dry up who's our living water the king of kings the messiah hmm? that's our living water as long as we are planted in him close to him we keep him here huh? he's our lord and savior you stay green winter comes bad times come good times come you know your strength you know your foundation your source of water is there it is there they are like trees planted along the river bank bearing fruit in each season good times bad times you're bearing fruit you're prospering you're moving forward because your trust is in the lord the provider your protector is right there right there by you because you are in his word day and night you are in his word day and night. You don't need favors from demons. You don't. You need the law of the Lord. You need his word. And then you green throughout. Your life is just on a, you know, a upward slope, an increasing slope. Because you got your supplier right next to you. His name is Jehovah, the Messiah. So, their leaves never wither. And they prosper in all they do. That was the, the one sentence that made me when i read that law of attraction thing that made me think about someone because i enjoy reading someone and i've highlighted it and i read it over and over because like all of us we want to prosper in this life we want to move forward we want to grow we don't want to be stagnant we don't want to be poor we don't want to be suffering hmm? but the lord says there's his answer there's his alternative not even his alternative the 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 law of attraction is a a 0.0.0% alternative to the word of God. Let's put it the other way around because God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is all, he's almighty. So the Lord of, law of attraction, it's like, <laughs> it's like you buy a real, what, what, what can I say? A, a real Ferrari. And then you go buy a Volkswagen and you put the Ferrari sticker at the back. And then you say these two cars are the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Ferrari costs Ferrari money. Volkswagen, it's not in the same class. Okay. And prosper in all they do. So the Lord is saying, if you keep yourself like a tree that is planted close to His loving water, huh, you will prosper in your marriage. If you're not married, you will prosper in finding a godly man or woman to spend life with you you will prosper in your business you will prosper in your house you will prosper in in your family you will prosper as a mother as a father you will prosper uh, in in traveling you will prosper you will prosper in your job you will prosper in everything that you do you will prosper because he is your source he is your supply his word is what you are meditating on day and night that is what he says. And he's not a man that he should like. We are made in his image. He's not made in our image. He's not a man that he should, we should, he should like. He knows. He says, as far as the earth is from the heaven, so far are my thoughts from your thoughts. He's God. He created it. He knows everything. He knows everyone. Huh? There's nothing too ugly for him. Because he's the one that made it all. He's the one that takes care of it. He's the one that looks after it all. He's, he knows the beginning from the end. We don't know. The whole thing of the world, we are like one full stop in the whole lifetime or the whole lifespan of this earth. Your whole life is just like one full stop. He's God. So instead of meditating and, and praying, because meditation and prayer is the same thing. It's stillness of mind. It's focus. It is giving energy. It is worship. So instead of praying to demons to bring you your house and your business and your car and your husband or your wife, His promises, His promises, 
and he said you will prosper and they prosper in all they do not prosper in some things not prosper in other things but in some things they don't they prosper in, if you keep Keep yourself like a tree planted next to the water and you read the word, you meditate on his word day and night. You will prosper in all, 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 A-L-L, -L, every single part that you do. So that is Psalm, Psalms 1, verse 1, 2, 3. Okay, so it's going to be a short video because I'm notorious for making long videos, but today's video is going to be a short video. If you have been using the law of attraction, repent. Repentance is not go climb Mount Everest with 20 kilos of cement on each side for the Lord to forgive you. Repentance is Heavenly Father. From today on, I ask forgiveness for using the law of attraction. I did not know its origin and I did not know that it was giving, like, uh, giving legal right to demonic entities in my life. Lord, please forgive me. And in the name of Jesus, because Jesus said in his name we overcome all evil. In the name of Jesus, I break, I cancel, I destroy every curse, every covenant, every legal right, every contract that I have brought, not only on myself, but on my families, on my children, on my generations to come, through using the law of attraction. I break it, I cancel it, I destroy it, Father, in your name. And I will not... And if you have any books on the law of attraction, if you have any books on manifesting the ultimate you, if you have any books on um, spiritual enlightening or awareness or any new age books, any new age material, any crystals that you have made a little shrine for yourself, Christian, that you go bow at that shrine, it's an altar. It's an altar. The Lord says, have no other gods before me. I am God. Have no other gods before me. I'm a jealous God. He's a jealous God because He made us, He created us, He knows us, He loves us more than any human being can love us. Huh? I'm a jealous person too. Everybody's a jealous person. The way I think of God being a jealous God is, you see those two children that I brought into this world? If somebody just comes and tells me today that they are, that, that, that they are their mother, it's not going to go down well. Because I know, I know, I've got the heart of a mother. I brought those two children in the world through the grace of God. God has given me the grace and He's given me the blessing and He's given me the, the privilege of bringing those two children in the world. Nobody can just come and say, these are my kids. It's, it's going to be smoke and flames. So that's how God means He's a jealous God. He loves us more than anything in this world. Be well, guys. Stay in the word of the Lord. Love you guys.